So we've been looking at the caustic of the parabola, um, and we're looking at it in terms of the, the parabola um, described uh, as a quadratic Bezier and the caustic described um, as a cubic Bezier. Um, and I'd like to abstract away our, um, what, what we, had, we talked about um, in the last video into um, to look at the control polygons in a, a more abstract way. Uh, so here is the outer control polygon. So this is the control polygon for um, the uh, for the Chernhausen cubic. And I'm going to make it, it was, it is in fact, a, a, I saw an equilateral triangle. And so I will um, make that happen by defining the three lengths, uh, the lengths of the three sides to be A, uh, the same thing. Uh, and then I'm going to take the center points of these three sides. And this is uh, this is the what is going to define um, this is the control polygon that's going to define the uh, parabola. And I'm then going to so here's the 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 um, Uh, the tangent to the parabola, uh, g and h, and we're going to specify its location parametric along there as t, and parametric being the proportion along the uh, the line. So this is a proportion t uh, along each line. And what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to uh, change the color of this one so I can uh, keep tabs on it. And I'm going to actually uh, hide uh, these ones uh, so they don't get in my way. Um, so this is the line that defines the uh, the parabola and now I'm going to create uh, the lines which define the uh, uh, cubic I'm going to use T here. Uh, T along here. I notice G is lying on that by the look of it. And uh, again, we're going to use T here. And watch H, what do we expect to happen? Oh, what we expected has happened. Um, Let's just, before we put the next line in, let's just examine this diagram. So there's some interesting things here. Uh, first thing would be, uh, what exactly, is it really true that G lies on that uh, line? Uh, well, we can test that out by asking for the distance between uh, G and that line segment. Indeed it does. Um, and it would be no surprise to find that H lies on the other one. Uh, the other question is, whereabouts is it? Um, so let's have a look at distance GI. And let's look at distance IJ. And so you see, in fact, uh, G is halfway along. So these are both uh, halfway along uh, these lines. So that's one point. Um, what I now want to do is put the third uh, line that's going to generate the, the Bezier, uh, the cubic Bezier. Uh, this is a point, again, parametric location, or parametric location T, which is equivalent to saying uh, proportion T. Uh, so now, this line here is the line which is tangential to the cubic Bezier. What we want to show is that this line is also the reflection of a horizontal ray which hits GH 
proportion t along because we know that is the point of tangency with the um, with uh, the parabola. So let's create that point. So the first thing we need to say find is that g n over g h. This thing we want to be t, and in fact it is. So that is telling us that um, the tangent, the tangent to the spline, to the cubic spline, uh, passes through um, the point uh, n, uh, the point of tangency between g h and the parabola. Uh, the next question what it says was, well, what is it the reflection of? Um, so we need, can reflect this back. Let's do that. Reflect it back in the purple line. Giving us that line OP. Now the question is, um, as T varies, what does that OP do? Now there we can visualize it. Uh, what we want to do is ask for its angle with this baseline here. Um, and we can ask for that angle of OP to BC. Uh, and then we're getting pi. Um, they are um, parallel. Hence the uh, curve um, of the uh, the, the spline curve with whose, um, the cubic spline curve, whose uh, uh, the control uh, points are A, B, C, A, um, is, the, 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 the spline that that generates is in fact the caustic to the um, curve generated um, uh, by the D F E um, as a quadratic spline. Um, big uh, complicated statement, but notice there are no curves in this diagram. This diagram is only in terms of uh, uh, points and lines and proportions. And this is something that you could um, uh, readily do by hand um, using similar triangles and whatnot, um, or as I've done it, <laughs> using GX Web. Um, next, I'm going to look at the same problem, uh, only with a generalization. Instead of taking the midpoints, uh, D, E, and F, I'm going to look proportion at a, a particular proportion, S, um, along uh, the lines. And this has bearing on uh, what happens uh, if the light is coming in obliquely.